Hey folks, um, so I'm Greg Anderson, and uh, as mentioned, I'm from Arctic Startup, which is a blog that should be all of your guys' homepage by now. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. But uh, anyways, we're, we're here today to talk about um, kind of splitting your operations or like why companies from Silicon Valley would move to, to Finland or to the Nordics in general. Like, uh, I think the, it's kind of different. Like, every entrepreneur we talk to is like, yeah, I really want to like, expand from here to, to Silicon Valley. Like, that seems to be every entrepreneur's goal. But um, I think it's pretty interesting that some people are doing the reverse of this. So uh, I think we'll have an interesting talk here. So um, I'll let these guys introduce themselves, kind of explain like, who they are and um, what they're working on. And then uh, I guess we can keep it kind of brief and then jump into the discussions then. Yeah, so we'll start with you, Alex. Very cool. Hi, Hi everyone. I'm Alex Arias. I'm the CEO of Omniada. Uh, we provide analytics, CRM, A-B testing tools for different companies that have a digital business, particularly in the gaming side. Uh, we, some of our customers are, well, Rovio, King, and uh, EA, and a number of uh, startups here in the, in the zone. And um, we have an office in San Francisco. We have an office in Helsinki. About 10 people here in Helsinki, 15 in San Francisco. Two years old, the startup is still in closed beta with our product. And recently announcing that, well, we're going beyond this closed beta and allowing other companies to start using our services. Yeah. Daniel? OK, yeah, and Daniel. Cool. Yeah, so I'm Daniel. I work for Crandom, which is a Nordic and now uh, Silicon Valley based VC firm, um, backers of Spotify, iSettle, and Omniot, actually, where I'm on the board of. Um, and what we've seen, it, you know, to your point, Greg, what we've seen a lot of uh, happening is that Nordic companies, Nordic entrepreneurs, they move their operations eventually, they move founders eventually to the US. It's a big market. They have partners, uh, platforms, exits, uh, all happening there. Um, and so we felt that we need to be there for entrepreneurs. So we put a team in place there. Um, so, you know, there, there's definitely some benefits of having people, some people doing stuff here um, and over there, but also challenges. Um, so with Omniata, it's kind of this, this you know, other way around, which, which I think is very interesting. So they started in, in San Francisco, but now have, you know, 30, 40% of the team in, in Helsinki. So hopefully I can, you know, bridge some of uh, uh, the perspectives from, you know, the Nordic phase, but looking at Finland versus, or, or Nordics uh, versus uh, Silicon Valley from, you know, both angles. Good. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, my name is Royce Dessini, and uh, I'm the founder and CEO for Mob Crush. It's a live mobile gaming startup, uh, very new. Uh, I was originally from Silicon Valley, uh, moved to LA, so the company is incorporated in LA, and uh, we're here because mobile game developers, if you look at the charts, are, are all here in the Nordics. And, uh, I think just to give you a little context on our company, we have like a short video. If you guys don't mind, we can, we can play it. Let's hope they got that cue. <laughs> so do we... Uh, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, let's see if the <laughs> video is going to play. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We'll wait two seconds, I guess. But well, in the meantime, I guess yes. you can explain Mob Crush like uh, just kind of briefly, then, like so. Yeah. So, like I mentioned, it's a it's a live mobile game streaming startup. So we enable mobile game players to stream their gameplay along with their video and audio, and then chat in real time around that uh, gameplay and media. Okay. Um, so and something similar to Twitch, then, basically. Twitch. Yeah, we get compared to Twitch a lot, yeah. uh, but it's a it's a mobile focused team. So. It, our DNA is mobile, we're starting in mobile, and that's the reason why we're here, talking with mobile game developers in the region. And we think you know, there's something in the waters here in the Nordics that a lot of the great mobile games and uh, companies are based here. So super interested in uh, building a relationship and even a presence here in the region. So like you mentioned, Daniel, like we're the opposite of like, it's Silicon Valley, like US-based company, that's moving over and having mm -hmm. a presence in this region. Yeah. 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 So if, you, if it was very much about the, the, the customers, or the, the, the leading uh, you know, companies in the, in the mobile, mobile uh, game space that made you sort of focus, focus here. Exactly, okay. exactly. And uh, we have a common friend uh, that introduced me to the region. It's, it's that, like, if you look at the space for, for mobile gaming, like I said, the chart uh, toppers uh, in the space are, are mostly 
uh, Nordic-based uh, game developers. Yeah. And, and you feel like you couldn't hit them properly from, so, like, uh, from San Francisco or something? Like, you couldn't, like, wh why move all your operations here then? Why couldn't you just do a few Skype calls once a week, wake up early or something like that? I think my perspective on that, so it's, uh, like I said, we're a fairly young company. Um, the game developers we've talked to so far uh, from the Nordics have a US presence. Uh, but most of the people that they have staffed, uh, say in the San Francisco office, would be the general manager for the U.S. operations. Uh, but you know, bulk of the team that are creating the actual games are based here, and uh, you know, you need to be able to like have that relationship and, and interface with with the teams that are on ground here in the in the space. So I think as we start out, you know, it'd be good for us to have. Face-to-face uh, -face meetings with uh, the people and the teams based over here, mm. and uh, and perhaps like split our time between the U.S. and and the Nordic market. Yeah. Yeah. Alex, that sounds really similar to uh, what we were talking about earlier, where um, these these uh, Nordic gaming giants or European gaming giants in general, they don't want to feel like second-class citizens to like the Valley or something like that. Is that right? So um, I was hoping you could kind of explain this, the story of Omenada, like um, how you guys, you guys broke off from the gaming scene here. You guys were part of Digital Chocolate, like uh, I guess working with Oka Pananen and, uh, and the guy, those guys going to Supercell. But what, what's the story behind the company and how did you decide to split it between um, here and there? No, that's, that's a great question. I think it's, um, it's been a lot of fun all this journey. The journey of Omenada really explains a lot about the product and the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, so um, I'm originally from Chile. Um, I moved to Finland. I lived here for about a year in 2008, 2009. Those were the time where Digital Chocolate, we started building all this. We were the, 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 the company providing uh, analytics and CRM to our iPhone games and to our Facebook games mm -hmm. by then. And uh, really, the, for me, what I was amazed during the, first, during the time that I lived here is the quality of the talent here. It, there's, it's really in the values about the long-term thinking, about uh, the execution, about uh, building trust also. So really, it, it creates, for me, the best products I've ever seen have come from, uh, and the gaming industry have come from, from Finland. And that was incredibly clear by then. Uh, so it's really no surprise that that, that same people that was um, being part of that, of that company at that time had now spread out into other companies on the, on the game industry, making a big impact because it takes years. It takes years to get this level of knowledge and how to execute properly on the, on the video game side. So my team actually comes from that area. Kara is running our, our offices in, um, in, in Helsinki. You are lead engineer also uh, from Helsinki. And most of the talent has uh, coming from that time that we are united together trying to solve a problem that we have been iterating over years trying to solve over and over again. And eventually, only then you solve the hard problems. Hard problems take time and take focus. And I think that's part of the values that you see on, on the Nordics that I'm amazed with. And that's why I couldn't wait when asked if we started the company in San Francisco. I knew that I wanted to start the office in Finland, both to support one of our early customers that were based in the Nordics, and secondly, because the kind of talent that you get here is unparalleled on the execution side. You combine that with all the big dreams and the power of, making, of taking a good product and, and distribute it globally that you have in San Francisco and the Silicon Valley, then you have a winner. Then you have the best product capable of changing people's life at a bigger scale. And that, that's what I think there's a lot of synergy of what could happen between the Nordics and, um, and the US. And, and combining those two is something that we have been trying to build ourselves. And uh, I think it has worked really well. Yeah. Go ahead. So I, I mean, um, what we see a lot when uh, the uh, Nordic companies move to the US is sort of there, there's a lot of challenges with that. Sort of operationally, you have the time zone differences. Uh, we often advise the companies to you know, at least have some of the leading people, uh, founders preferably, moving there. It's still the culture when you're you know, so far away uh, because you know it, it, it's so hard to create a company in the early days in two locations. So could could you share some of your experiences there, given that you know you had a you, you had an experience from living here. Um, what, you know, both ex challenges that they might have had, but also if you hadn't had the network, if you hadn't had a connection to Finland before, would have been as easy for you, or did it make, make a big impact? 
Yeah, I have to say in our case it was much easier because we have the connection and the people. Yeah. I really, Kara would have to speak how hard or easy it <laughs> was to set things up um, here in, in, in Helsinki. But from our perspective, actually, what I saw from a legal standpoint, it was minutes. It was so efficient, mm -hmm. ridiculously efficient to start a company here. But what you need to have is the people that want to jump the boat mm -hmm. and say, I'm okay leaving my cozy job and going for a new startup. That for me, I think, was the hardest part than actually creating the, creating the company. Yeah. In the Silicon Valley, it's a little bit the, the opposite. There's, people do try uh, new opportunities. They are okay of going from one job to another. You see that more often, but, but here it's in the culture that maybe you feel a little bit more comfortable on, the, on what you're doing now. And just trying to get that energy and convince people and tell them, look, there's something beyond what you're doing today that you could be doing now is start a new company. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a little bit scary, but I think that I have seen that change in mindset in the last few years in Finland. That's why, I mean, Slash has become yeah. what, it, what it is today. Um, but I think it was really straightforward once you have the right people that wants to mm -hmm. be part of it. Mm -hmm. So Alex, you, you would say like one, one thing that I heard from what you said is, the people here are, like, are, are a little bit more loyal to the company that they join, yes. I suppose, to. <laughs> so we tend to see that a lot uh, back in the States, right? Like, like I said, like people hopping from one company to the next. Um, and I think, what, what other differences have you been able to see to compare and contrast you know, the ecosystem in Silicon Valley and, and here? Like I said, like we're, we're a fairly new company and fairly new to this market. Uh, we'd love to get your perspective, like, you know, having been in both markets operating. Uh. Yeah, what, what you're mentioning about um, job hoping, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a true challenge. Um, what I have seen, this incredible talent there yeah. in, in San Francisco uh, that wants to make an impact fast, a big impact, and they want yeah. to learn too, yeah. but for them, the rewards are in the scope of a year. Yeah. Max two years. That's the time they want to invest to get in a result, right? And there are only certain challenges that you can solve within that time scope. So it reduces a little bit the kind of things that you can do, but I think it's perfectly fine to yeah. have people trying to optimize within that time frame. And um, you have to deal with that. You have to acknowledge that that is the case. When you bring in people, okay. they expect to create an impact between one, two years, and they want to move on to something else. And once you are past that, that and you realize that that's the case, you deal with it and actually you want to optimize for bringing that excellent marketing people, sales people, uh, product managers that come from uh, great experience from other companies, yep. make an impact and then they will go. It's, it's a natural way, that's how you do things in the Silicon Valley. Yep. Here I think as you're saying, people is more loyal yep. and are willing to um, not just because of lawyers, but they think that there's a bigger uh, problem to solve, which yeah. I think the kind of problem you have to deal with here are meant to, the mentality here is meant uh, to solve those type of long-term problems. Yeah. That's why that combination thing makes a lot of sense, because that aggressiveness that you see is like, let's go big within a year, you only get it in the valley. Yep. Right? It's hard yep. to say here, everyone, hey, we're going to build a platform, we're going to be all over the world in a year. They're going to say, no, 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 we need to uh, you know, go step by step. You, you just don't do that. Yep. So that combination thing can be very powerful, but that has been my experience. You just need to acknowledge that the cultures are different and manage it accordingly. Good, good. Um, so how, how is it to have your company split between, like, uh, well, the diff time difference between here and the U.S. or San Francisco is like 10 hours, I believe, right? Yeah, <laughs> tell me yeah. about that. Yeah, every time I have to do an interview with someone in Silicon Valley, like, I, it's such an ordeal. Like, I either have to wake up really early or stay up late. Like, I'm, after eating dinner, like, I'm on the phone again. So what, how, how do you structurally make your company work, like, uh, over a 10-hour time difference? You really have to um, wake up early and work late now. Well, okay. besides that, <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes you do, but yeah. it's about ownership. You want to bring ownership and the ability to self uh, to do things by themselves independently in um, in 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 the Nordics and in this time zone, right? Yeah. So uh, as long as you have brought the li the right leadership that can make decisions independently, and you have select what are the areas that they 
can uh, make decisions by themselves. They don't have dependencies on this side. You want to try to cut the dependencies as much as possible. Yeah. And then synchronize, you just need to be effective on the communication. Again, our team, Kara particularly, has put a, a very robust framework where that communication happens. For instance, we have an end of day email, mm. which means that whatever we did in one end of the world gets instantly communicated to the next day. So when you start, then you know what happened there. And actually yeah. this working in tandem can be used as an advantage. Imagine you go to sleep, wake up the next day, and things get done. And then you take it from there, you send it over to the other side of the world, things get done then again. Yeah. You work at 2x speed, as opposed to being that a barrier, so like, oh, I can't move forward because I haven't talked to those guys. Yeah. I think that if you are smart enough on how you, you can create a framework, it can, it can become a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. But yeah, synchronizations and working later, sometimes it's, it's, it's needed, but I think that uh, as part of as part of a global business. Yeah, yeah. And I think to to really get there, you need to really avoid trying to you know the, the risk that you're building two separate cultures, two separate companies. So it's really important to get the sense of you know common goal, building a common culture, so that you have the trust and you know even credibility. You know sort of who's if I leave this, someone else will take over and, and perform and deliver. I think that's super important. And that you have to invest in. Uh, that yeah. could mean you know, people are moving back and forth, traveling a lot, having the, taking the time to, to really create that. Um, and, and I think that that's true for either, either direction. So, yeah, um, yeah and maybe just... OK. Oh, that'd be okay. easy. Um, well, when, uh, one thing I wanted to ask about, like, uh, you're, you're evaluating companies every day, you know, like looking at um, a bunch of companies that have scaled up to where they, they're in San Francisco or in Silicon Valley and then also here as well. Have you seen like big disparities in culture and is that like a bad sign to you? So I think there, there is a sign of culture and you touched upon it that um, there, there is a, oftentimes a more aggressive, you know, let's, let's go big or go home in, in, in the US and Silicon Valley. Yeah. I think in general we see in Nordics more you know, I, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to create this company. If it doesn't get to number one, I'm still hanging on to it. Mm. You know, as an as entrepreneur in years ago, okay, if I can't be number one, let's scrap it and, and move on to the next thing. Sure. Yeah. So I think the, the whole lean startup movement and, and iteration, faster iteration has been great for the Nordics because it's sort of getting you a methodology to do that without necessarily having to change people's mindset and culture necessarily. Yeah. Um, so I think we, um, we see much more ambitious entrepreneurs, and I think it's also part of you know, role models. So if you're in the game space, you, know, you see guys like Rovio succeed and, and, and Supercell, mm -hmm. you, know, that's, you, you set the bar pretty high now. Yeah. Um, that was not the case maybe 10 years ago. Um, so I think that's, that's a great asset we have in the Nordics now, that we have customers that, I mean, you even come here to meet them. Correct. No, that's, that's great. Um, and entrepreneurs are having those role models that they can learn from and get inspired by. So in terms of that entrepreneurial quality, it's just a, it's such a difference to 10 years ago. It's amazing. Yeah. When, when you two were uh, considering like, moving some of your operations over here, did you, ever, did you crunch the numbers at all? Like, did uh, the salaries or anything <laughs> like that come into consideration? Or was it just the whole mindset? I think the, uh, the, uh, the pers I got my perspective on that being a, a super new company. So like, our, our, the way we look at the space, like, who are the top game developers like globally? Like, who are producing, to your point, like world-class quality products? Uh, they're here, yeah. and so you know that's the primary reason. And then, of, of course, like you know, being a startup, we we run lean and, and figure out how do we do it in a capital-efficient manner. But uh, if the success criteria for a company like ours is to have great content and great games, we have to be here. And then figure out a way in, in, uh, in running lean or, or crunching those numbers to align against that overarching goal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What about you, Alex? Yeah, it's, it is talent. That is yeah. the main reason. The calculations came months after, actually it was after the fact. I mean, what is the, the cost of running a company here? What is the legal overhead? And it ended up being also a pretty, pretty happy uh, calculations in the end. I mean, uh, there are even incentives on the, came as a surprise to me, but even on the tax, in, on, on, on tax is something, is, is positive for us to be generating revenues locally here and paying taxes here in Finland. Yeah. Uh, uh, the corporate tax is actually lower than what you have in the, in the US. So eventually, uh, I mean, it's a win-win. You have the best talent. It's a slightly 
uh, uh, cheaper. I mean, the market there is, is really overheated also to on, on in regards to talent. Yeah. Uh, but I think that what matters the most, you wouldn't mind to pay the premium. But again, that expertise of having people that has been solving these hard problems, have been building this product for 10 years. Mm. Where do you find them? You, can you create it from one day to another? You don't. I mean, that people is very unique. It would, it, and it's what makes products unique too. Mm. Clash of Clans or any of the products that make an impact, why do they make an impact? Because the people behind that is unique and has been working on trying to create something beautiful that can affect experience and they're passionate about that. Mm. That is the reason you get a product make an impact and it all boils down to people. Companies are just an arbitrary arrangement of people and that is all what's, what's valuable in the end. So that is, is the only reason why, or the main, the, pretty much the only reason why you want to hire and bring people aboard, particularly here in Helsinki. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how have salaries uh, changed in the Nordics here? Because, I mean, like, if you look at, well, there's these great game companies moving up and up. So um, you're obviously in the market for d developers with some gaming talent or yeah. some on the analytics side, maybe. And you're also looking at uh, developer, like game developer talent, I guess, people that know the games industry. Yep. So um, has, has, is it getting up to Silicon Valley prices here? Or what's, what's, the, uh, what's the deal? Is it slightly lower? Yeah. I think it's, it's a stable. I think it makes sense. It, it, it really uh, is it's not crazy. It's, uh, I don't know, 20% lower or something that Silicon Valley, maybe less, but, but, but around that. And um, it's much more flat. Also, you don't have like the rock star that you need to pay, pay 5x somebody else it's because yeah. of the mindset here. Things are much more well uh, defined. We didn't have really have any problem uh, with that. Uh, people acknowledge and understand that because of their role, there's an associated price tag with their experience and what they provide. They expect that. They don't mm. expect less than that. We do not expect outrageous uh, uh, money uh, beyond that. No, not at all, actually. It's very reasonable. They understand that they're part of, uh, of something uh, great and they have a role to play. It's much less individualistic in a sense that you want to negotiate your own uh, salary and try to get uh, most of that. They really want to be part of a team. And I think that's something tremendously valuable because it, it creates a synergy of people being in, um, towards a common objective as opposed to having these individual players Mm. They want to score by themselves and get all the uh, limelight. Um, that is something that is really amazed me on how people here is really working together towards that common objective. And that's one of part of the culture and the values that I think sure. is tremendously valuable. Mm. I think the, um, of course, salaries might be driven up if you have many, many companies looking, f looking for the same talent. Um, but I think the challenge is maybe more so in the Nordics that it's still a limited ecosystem. So there might be specific roles which are very, very hard to find people at all, even how much you pay. Yeah, true. You, know, you don't find the same caliber of, say, outside games, I would say, um, you know, uh, product people that have you know, built cons consumer services to the extent that they've done in Silicon Valley. You, know, you, hardly can f you can't hardly find them. It doesn't matter sort of how much you're willing to, to pay up, uh, necessarily. Um, so that is, of course, you know, the scaling. How do you build a company where you need maybe 50 and 100 and, and even more that? Um, the, 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 the best people in many areas are in Silicon Valley. Yes, you need to pay up. At least maybe you have a shot of getting them. Uh, and that's a challenge for many Nordic companies that eventually forces them maybe to move their operations elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, Just one comment on that I think that is also um, important. I think that... Because people, I mean, on the salary side, what really matters is the position, what they're going to do. People choose is what they really believe on. So they want to work in a project that is rewarding. They, want, uh, they can get opportunities. It's not just the money that's going to make you happy. It's, it's you, you want that to be fair according to what you're doing, but really you want to work in a project mm. that where you can really add value, which means that the right resources will be put on the right positions because you know that that person is there because they want to make an impact and they care about that. If you put incentives only on the monetary side, then you end up with this race for just, for just salaries that we have seen in Silicon Valley is a little bit like that. Uh, and that doesn't mean that the resources are adequately distributed to the right position. That makes sense? Yes, it does. <clears throat> and I think, you know, um, how much time do we have? Like, I have a question for Daniel, actually. Like, from an investor perspective, you know, you're now straddling both markets, right, here and 
having a presence in the U.S. Like, have, are you seeing? You know, it's what we've seen so far is like uh, Nordic-based companies moving to that side of the the world. How much of a trend is it uh, that you see going the other way? Kind of like us? Uh, Not so much. I yeah. mean, it's it's. Uh, th th there was a time maybe ten years ago when there were some telecom players that were kind of important in this region. Yep. <laughs> That's no lo longer the case. Um, so th at that time there were some movements. Um, but I think game game has sort of emerged as, as a, clearly an area where the Nordics are leading, you know, even on, on a global basis. Yep. We see it to some extent in music, Spotify, of course, coming out of there. There's some other interesting uh, activities, sure. um, but it's, it's not a trend. Um, so there's still sort of this hidden gem, if you like, for the local community or access to great tech people. Yes. But then setting up operations in the US where you have more the co commercial savviness and, and uh, that stuff. So, yep. so far, the um, in, in games specifically, yes, there is there's now you know studios being set up. EA, I think, set up a studio here, so they're all trying to get into the same talent base. But uh, okay. in most industries, uh, it's 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 not the case. Got it. Um, so we still have some work to do there. <laughs> Good. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> no worries. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, well, thanks, guys. I think we're running out of time, but we might have enough time to uh, to play your video. Like okay. uh, where we're doing that. <laughs> so let's see if we can get that loaded up this time. Come on, big money. Oh, yeah. right. I feel like I'm in. Yeah, a few titles we recognize. I see why you moved up here. So yep. thank awesome. you. Thanks again, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you.